video, we are going to talk about some of the troubleshooting tools available in DataPower. We'll talk about the troubleshooting tools using which you can uh, troubleshoot some of the network and connectivity issues. We'll also talk about some of the troubleshooting tools which uh, are required from an um, applications perspective and will help you troubleshoot uh, the applications, the configuration that you create in the data power. So without further ado, delay, let's get started. I'm trying to log into my data power appliance here. And uh, here I log in. Most of the troubleshooting tool that uh, you wish to see are present under the troubleshooting section. Now here you have three tabs, main, probe, and conformance validation. This conformance validation tab is practically not very useful. So main and probe are the ones that we usually focus on. Main tab has a list of troubleshooting tools available. More tools are available under the default domain. But first, let's get into uh, the non-default domain and see what options do we have. The first one, uh, the, the section labeled networking means these are network troubleshooting tools. So ping remote will allow you to issue a ping command from data power and see if you get a reply uh, from backend or not. For example, I can see www.google.com and I can see ping, say ping remote and it will tell whether this command is successful or not. So in a moment, um, it will tell you the output. Say confirm. Host unreachable. Now you can see that it is unlikely that google.com is unreachable, which means that <coughs> ping remote has all the limitations that a ping command has, which means, which also means that if your server is behind a firewall and the uh, ICMP protocol is not enabled in the firewall, then uh, most likely the ping command will fail. Anyways, ping is not a sure shot test of um, um, the availability of a backend server. So let's do another test, which is TCP connection test. The, t the idea behind the TCP connection test is simple. You're not trying to blindly test whether google.com box is open or not. You're trying to uh, see whether a particular service on that box is, um, um, is running or not. And this is, this is very permissible stuff. So do a TCP connection test. And you can see that it succeeded pretty much quickly and easily which means that this service is running on this box. Of course, this box is up and running. That's why uh, this service is also up and running. But the, as I said, there are fundamental difference between how the ping command works versus how the TCP connection test works. Ping command uses ICMP protocol. It is usually not enabled in the uh, firewall. So this test, this test uh, may fail. So a good and correct test is to test for a particular service running on a particular box and that is what the TCP connection test proposes. Beyond which you see logging section, it allows you to change the log level of the current appliance. Currently the log level is error but uh, this also means that you will be able to see error, critical, alert and emergency logs. If you want to see warning, notice, information, and debug level logs, then you will not be able to see. To change this, you will have to select this, and you will have to say set log level. This will ensure that the log level of the current, uh, app, uh, current application domain changes to debug level. The reason why I selected debug is because if you enable the debug, you will be able to see all the logs po possible on the data power. So that is what the set log level means over here. Generate log event is primarily for generating a log event. This is this is useful when you are create when you have created a, a specific log category and you want to test whether uh, that log category. Uh, uh, is working fine or not. So that is what the generate log event or not. 
Now generate the error report is primarily useful for generating an error report. It, an error report is typically a file in data power which contains all the configurations present on this data power appliance regardless of the application domain. So that is what the er error report is. Now error reports are typically useful when uh, you generate it from the default domain. From here as well, I can generate the error report, but the suggested idea is to generate it from default domain. We'll see it shortly. Send error reports. Some data power appliances are restrictive. You cannot download the zip file from data power appliance uh, file system. So in that case, your only option is to provide an SMTP server address and email address over here so that the error report can be emailed to that person or to that address. So that is what the send error report is. Uh, view running configuration is not very useful. If you want to see the running configuration on data power, objects which are in up and down state, then perhaps a better way is to see the object status as I am looking at right now. See this? So it allows you to see the services versus types and this will help you see which objects are down and why they are down. The detail says why they are down. The logs also can give you more details about why a particular uh, thing is down. Let's get to the default domain. I'm in default domain and if I go to the troubleshooting section, I have more tools at my disposal. You can see networking section pretty much remains the same, but packet capture section opens up. The packet capture section typically works in a very simple manner. You define the Ethernet interface where you are supposed to do the packet capture. So interface type is Ethernet interface or you can say all interface then it will capture the packets on all different Ethernet interfaces. Right now there is no Ethernet interface coming over here. The primary reason is because this is data power docker appliance. Had you been dealing with a data power physical appliance or for that matter virtual or VM based appliance then your interface names would come here. So you need to select the interface. You need you typically select mode as time. It is, it is a good choice. Maximum duration, you can provide here the duration of uh, the packet capture, like five minutes or so, whatever in seconds you provide it. Maximum size, see, uh, packet capture is very performance intensive activity. So usually it will dump a large amount of data on the files. And file size typically will be in several megabytes. Now, this says what would be the size of one single file? 10,000 kilobytes, practically one megabyte. So it is, uh, sorry, it is 10 MB, right? One zero, yeah, it is 10 MB. So this is the size of the one file. Now, uh, this is the size of the one file, but it may be possible that you will end up having 10 or 20 files depending upon how long you capture the file. So be ready for that. Maximum packet size, don't change it. This is 9000 bytes, keep it as it is. Filter expression allows you to filter out unwanted packets. Um, I would suggest that only if you know what filter expression does, you put it here. Otherwise, keep it uh, blank. It will end up uh, capturing all sorts of different packets. So at the end, you will not uh, have a question like whether my packets are captured or not. All of them are captured. So you can filter out later in the Wireshark if you want. And then you can say start packet capture. So it will start the packet capture. These captured packets you will find in the temporary folder. Now you want to do this uh, once your file capture has started, it will run up to this maximum duration after which it will automatically stop. Stop packet capture option is useful when the mode is not timed but continuous. In that case you need to select the Ethernet interface where the packet capture is happening and you need to click on stop packet capture. Leaving the packet capture opened is disastrous for data power. That's why this option is provided only for uh, administrators. Okay. So these are some of the tools and here I said generate error report. Generating an error report is very easy. You can simply click on this button and it says OK. Now how do you download the error report? Uh, for now uh, it says no error report available for viewing but you should actually check in the uh, file management. 
and inside the file management under the temporary folder you should see an error report over here so you download any one of them you can see the size of both of them is same so you download any one of them and then uh, this is your uh, error report it's a big x semi xml type of file which is typically used by ibm uh, uh, when they do some kind of troubleshooting on your appliance so they will ask for it this is part of a must gather information so that's pretty much um, about the troubleshooting. Now, um, in the next episode, we'll talk about the probe and how to effectively use probe uh, as part of your troubleshooting stuff.